I think everyone knows that reading a math book is not like reading a regular book, but it's still reading, so it's very, very similar. You still want to be able to sit down and focus and give it your 100% concentration so that you can learn as much as possible. In this video, we're going to talk about how to read math books. And basically, I'm going to start by answering a email, an email that I received from a viewer here on the channel. And if you have any advice for this person, uh, please leave a comment in the comment section below. So I'm gonna read the message first in its entirety. The person's name is Lynn, and they say, I am Vietnamese, by the way, smiley face. The subject is reading maths books, and the message reads as follows. Math is really fascinating to study, but every time I open my textbooks or other math books to read, I find it hard to focus for several minutes, especially when I get to the part with full of symbols, subscript notations, and all the stuff like that, as if I find it really hard to follow. Is it really weird to have this struggle or are other people are struggling the same thing as me? Do you have any advice to help us read maths book without being overwhelmed? Thank you so much. By the way, I really like maths and I am currently studying for my A-levels, maths and further maths and two other subjects. They involve quite a bit of reading, so I am struggling how to read the textbooks with ease, not only for my current studies, but also for my future uni as well. Thank you so much. Awesome, what a great comment, or message rather. This is a great, great email. Uh, I am so happy. Thank you, Lynn, for um, asking this. And I love how they use uh, the word maths <laughs> multiple times, like maths and further maths and two other subjects. I'm not used to saying maths, right? Normally I say math. Um, for those of you that don't know, um, there's a difference, right? Uh, I believe it's regional. In certain parts of the world, okay, it's not just regional, it's, it's, it's world worldwide. In certain parts of the world, um, people say math and in other parts of the world, people say maths. So I do have some advice. So first, let me say, um, get books that are readable and very readable. And I'm not saying math books aren't readable, but no, math books are not created equal, right? Math books can be drastically different or they can be very similar. Um, it just depends on the books. So I wanna show you two books here that are going to help you. So this first book here, all the mathematics you miss but need to know for graduate school. The topic, uh, the rather the title of the uh, of the book is because the book is written for people who want to go to graduate school and this is the math they should know. So what happens is you end up with a book that has a survey of mathematics and it's a beautiful book. It's got tons of topics and I think this is a book that you can sit down and read and enjoy and you'll get a lot out of it and it will make you want to read more math. Now it has symbols, so this book does require that you know you know some mathematics, but still I think it is probably one of the best math books I have because of the content that it contains and the way it's written. It's just a very accessible book, even though it's intended for people going to grad school in math, it's just very accessible. This one is going to help you with your specific problem, I think, and it won't, we'll talk about the focus in a minute, but it's going to help you with the symbols and it's going to give you a new perspective on mathematics. When you read a piece of mathematics in, in a book, um, like an algebra a book or something, you're going to have a different perspective um, than, than what you have now, you know, if you, if you, are looking at books now and you're reading formulas in those books, you're thinking, oh no, I don't get it, or there's some confusion in your mind, you know? Like for example, if you were reading an algebra book like this one, this is a really good algebra book, College Algebra by Blitzer, and you know, you read a definition or you read some statement that's highlighted or a theorem, you know, you memorize it. But when you know more math, you kind of start to question things a little bit more like, oh, uh, eventually you look at stuff and you say, yeah, I know how to prove that. That makes sense. This book will teach you how to prove it. It's called How to Prove It, A Structured Approach. It's written by Daniel Vellman. Um, this book is very affordable and it's a really good size. Um, I have read this book while laying in bed uh, and I have read it at my desk as well. <laughs> but because it's a paperback, um, you can read it you know, while laying in bed. This is a book that I resisted buying for several months. People commented about this book here on the channel 
and uh, I didn't want to buy it because it was a paperback. Eventually I bought it and I spent some time with it and it's awesome. This book will teach you everything. It'll teach you how to read mathematics. It'll teach you how to read uh, theorems. You'll be able to read a proposition in a book and you'll say, okay, I understand what that proposition means. You might not know how to prove it, but you'll be able to like read things and understand them. You'll understand the symbols. It explains all of the symbols. This is perfect for someone who wants to study mathematics. So if you were thinking of like becoming a math major, this, this is the book, right? This is it right here. Get this book and you are going to learn so much. It, it, it's life changing. Okay. It really is. It, it really is learning how to write proof. And, and learning mathematics, learning about logic. Um, it's just it's just really nice. It gives you a clarity of mind and it's really beautiful. There's some really beautiful arguments. Some of the proofs are incredible. I mean, you read some some proofs written there you know, from the past. You know, I was reading a, a proof um, by Paul Erdos uh, a few weeks ago uh, while I was uh, sitting at uh, a mechanic shop, uh, long story, and <laughs> I thought, wow, uh, it was a really short, simple proof, but it was like, that's really clever. Like, what an interesting argument. Um, and so, you know, not all proofs are that clever, but you get that still, that same wow moment when you figure it out on your own. So that's my advice for books. Here's two books, again, that will help you. This one's just a good math book that you can read. It'll help you appreciate mathematics a little bit more, perhaps, um, you know, because you've probably dealt with a lot of frustration just trying to read and not being able to do it. This one will actually teach you the symbols and everything you need and how to prove things in mathematics. That is huge, right? That is such a big thing. It takes a long time to get good at writing proofs. Um, that's something that people struggle with a lot. And if you can learn anything from this book, that, that would be incredible. As far as being able to focus, because that's also a big deal, let's go back to your email. Um, yeah, focus for several minutes. Yeah, I find it hard to focus for several minutes. Yeah, when, especially when you get to the part full of symbols and subscript notations. Yeah, so once once you you know learn more about like mathematics and the symbols and stuff, when you encounter new math, it will make you better at it. Another suggestion I have, and this is not related to these books, is you could get a timer, right? I'll, I'll try to leave a link in the description. There's a timer I always use. It's really good. I usually have it here with me and I'd show you. And it's simple. And you just set it for 30 minutes or an hour and you do math and then you stop, right? And then it's like, yeah, it, it's really good for like, let's say like you really want to do math, but you also want to do something else. And you're like, oh, I really should be doing math because I have to study for a test or something or I have homework. Just set the timer for 30 minutes, right? Be like, it's only 30 minutes of my day. It's only 30 minutes of my day. And if you realize, you know, if, if, you're, if you're mindful of the fact that it's only going to take you 30 minutes to do it, you're going to set that timer down and you're going to do it. Just be aware of the fact that hey, it's only going to take me 30 minutes and then you'll be able to do it successfully. It's it's how people, you know, they do, they go to the gym and they do cardio, they work out for 30 minutes. It's the same thing with mathematics, right? Just 30 minutes a day and boom, you know. So anyways, um, that's my advice. If anyone else has advice for this person, please leave a comment below. Their name is Lynn and they wanted to know um, how they can just you know get better at reading math books. I really should do a follow-up video where where I actually sit down, I was thinking where I sit down with a math book and actually we just go through it and maybe just do like one chapter. I've been wanting to do that. It just takes so long. I mean, I don't think anyone wants to sit there for a 45-minute video of me reading an entire chapter of a math book. Uh, but, you know, I could show you how to read through it. And the thing is, when I read a math book, it's different from when you read it, right? So everyone has a different level of understanding. So yeah, anyways, that's it. Until next time, good luck and take care.